Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 113. Day 3113. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 113. We are on the topic of probability. And this is the 13th lesson, 13th video in a series of 15. Today we'll do problem number 13. Problem number 13 that you will find on page number 321. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 321. Problem number 13. Read the problem yourself. I have done as best as I could to put the problem on the blackboard. So here's what we are dealing with. We are told that we are, to, we are told that we have a total of 8,978 students. From the pool of 8,978 students, we are to pick one student at random and answer these questions. If one student is selected at random, what are the odds that the student selected is not a freshman? Part B, someone who lives off campus and is a senior. And part C, someone who's either a freshman or a sophomore and lives on campus. And th this is the data set there. People who live on campus, people who live off campus, and here are the four years, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and it should have been seniors, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, but I did not put the S for seniors, because that S would confuse us with the sophomores, so I put down L for the last year, L for the last year, which is the seniors. The students who are in their last year, the seniors and we will use the letter L to represent them. So freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and kids who are in the last year of their college, the seniors. Let's begin, shall we? Before I get going, I do want to make one or two couple of quick comments. This problem, as you see there, did not appear in the first and the second edition. In its, in its place, in its very place, where problem number 13 that you see there right now on page number 321, there was a different problem, a problem similar to which we a problem to which a uh, problem that we did yesterday was very much similar to what what used to be in the first and the second editions. Typically, they do not give you ugly numbers like these. These numbers are ugly. They are horrible, horrendous numbers. Somebody did not do a good job, in my opinion. This is not the sort of things that typically appears in the GRE because the purpose of the GRE is not to see how well, how quickly you can crunch numbers. The purpose in the G purpose of the GRE is simply to see that you understand the concept. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Today, as I speak. Today, as I speak, is July 1st, 2018. July 1st, 2018. I guarantee you that this problem will not be, will not be in the fourth edition. In the fourth edition, I guarantee you that. When the fourth edition comes out, this problem will be taken out of it because it doesn't belong there. Anyway, but at, at this point, we have no choice. We have to answer it, so let's begin. Somebody who's not a freshman. So if one student is selected at random, what are the odds that the student selected is not a random? I'm going to raise all of this part now because we don't need it. Part A. Probability that somebody that, that we select somebody who is not a freshman. Probability someone who is not a freshman, which which is actually written as choosing us probability of choosing somebody who is not a freshman in terms of symbols, the way we set it up, it will be written as probably of choosing somebody who is not a freshman, the bar on the top. The bar on the top is the negation of it. Somebody, somebody, who, somebody who is a freshman, letter F represents the people who are freshmen, and with the bar on the top, somebody who is not a freshman, which is simply, which is simply going to equal to 1 minus the odds of picking somebody who is freshman. If you subtract the odds of picking somebody who is a freshman, then whatever is left over, must be the odds of picking somebody who is not a freshman. So let's do it, shall we? 1 minus the odds of picking somebody freshman. How many freshmen do we have? We have, we have 1812 people, 1812 people who live on campus. By the way, letter C represents, letter C is going to represent the people who live on campus and and letter C here it's going to represent represent the people who live on campus, and similarly, with the, 
Similarly, with the C, with the bar on the top, with the bar on the top will represent the people who do not live on campus, they live off campus. So if you live off campus, if you do not live on campus, let's see with the bar on the top. Understand the notation, it will make, it will make life easier. So let's get going. So how many freshmen do we have? We have 1812 people who live on campus who are freshmen. These are freshmen but they live and they live on campus. 1812. And we have 625 who live off, off, off campus. They're all freshmen. Out of a total of 8,978. As you can see, these are ugly numbers. They, they, they serve no purpose. They're doing current kind of time that it's going to take to crunch this thing out does not show any understanding at all, does not manifest any understanding of any concept for anybody. It just shows how quickly you can crunch the number and that is not the bloody point of the exam. It's very annoying. Let's finish it up, shall we? So, 1812, 1812, 625, would be 7, 3, 4, 1, unless I made a mistake, so 2437, 2437, oh, we, and now we have to subtract it from the total here because because we need to, we're going to eventually have to do this. So let's do it up here. 8,000, 8,978 is the total amount, total number of people of which 2,437, these two numbers here, add it up to 2,437, subtract that, we're going to get a 1, a 4, a 5, and a 6. So. So this is what it boils down to. This one, of course, can be written as 8,978 over 8,978 minus the sum of these two, which is this right here, 2437 over 8,978. And we just found out that 8,978 minus 2,437 has to be, happens to be 6,000, happens to be we just found it out, 6,541. And as you can see, there is nothing we can do to it. It, 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 it does not reduce, it, it, it's just ugly. 6,541 divided by 8,978, and that's it. It cannot be reduced to a nice round number, or something, some, uh, some probability. It just sits there. And this is not, as I said, I keep repeating, this is not what you see typically in the exam. But anyway, that was part A. Part A was very simple. Let's move on to part B, shall we? Part B is asking us, what are the odds of picking somebody who lives off campus and, and is a senior? Somebody who lives off campus, the, the important part here, the most important part here, is to understand this word, and. Someone who lives off campus and, and is a senior, not or. It doesn't say someone who lives off campus or someone who is a senior. It says somebody who lives off campus and is a senior. So let's find that. Let's find that figure, shall we? Let's raise this thing so we don't get confused. We are part B now. This was 18. So the pe person we are looking for has to possess two qualities. First of all, they have to live off campus. These are the people who live off, ca off campus. These are the people. These are the people who are living off campus, and of which they have to live off campus and has to be senior and has to be senior right here. That is the figure we are looking for. 1623, that's it, 1623 out of the whole amount. We just did the problem, you see. But if you want to set it up, this is how it will look like. Part B, how would we write it? How would we write it in terms of symbols? Well, just like what it says. They have to live off campus. They have to live off campus. And how do we denote somebody who lives off campus? With the C with the bar on the top. They have to live off campus. That's the first quality they have to have. And, and, they have to be senior. What? Well, senior, we use letter L for seniors. And they have to be senior, L for seniors. Last year. And how many such people did we find? Right here. 1623. 1623. Out of how many total? This is the tricky part. Out of how many total? We need to erase this, all of this thing. We're done with part A. Out of how many total? Out of out of eight thousand nine hundred seventy-eight. This is one of this is going to be one of the answer choices in the exam. Is that correct? The answer is no. Answer is no. They have to be looking for people who live off campus. 
if you were to pick somebody, if you were to, if you were to pick somebody who lives off campus, but well, these are the people who live off campus, not all the people. Out of all the people who live off campus, the question was, out of all the people who live off campus, which is this amount, so the bottom here should be, bottom here should be the sum of those four numbers. 625 plus 908 plus 1282 plus 1623. These are the people who live off campus. And the question was, of all the people who live off campus, what are the odds that if I were to pick one, who happens to be senior, well the odds are 16.23 out of this amount. So now we have to figure out how many people live off campus. It's very annoying. Where can we do it? Let's do it right here. 16.25, we just have to take our time, 9.08 so that we don't make a mistake. 12.82 and 16.23. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be alright. The important part here, no matter how much of a hurry you are, no matter how much desire you have to save time, there are smart way of saving time and there are not so smart way of saving time. One of the worst things that you can do is to be sloppy and not line up your digits. Make sure your digits line up. If your digits line up, it makes it that much easier. So here we go. Here's a 5. I see a 5 here. I see a 5 here. The 5 plus 5 is 10. is 18. Carry 1. I see an 8 and a 2. That's a 10. That's a 10. And a 3. 3. Carry 1. I see a 10 again, 9 and 10, 10, and then 6 plus 2 is going to be 8, so it's 18, carry 1, and that's a 3. So 3, 8, 3, 8 is not what I had in my notes. Do I have the figures correctly? I just gave you a big sermon as to how not to be stupid, and that is precisely what I did here. Where did I, where did I make a mistake? This is not right. Let's start again. 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus uh, 8 is 18, 18, 8, carry, carry, carry 1. Then we have 8 plus 2 is 10, 10, and then 3 is 13, that's 3, carry 1. And here 1 plus 9 is 10. Oh, I left out the 6. Oh, bloody hell. Bloody hell, I left out the 6. It's important to pay attention. Bloody hell. So here we go one more time. Here, this is a 10. And then 6 plus 2 is 8. Well, let's do 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, so this should have been 4, 4, and then 24. This becomes a 24 because, you see, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, and 14 plus 10 is 24, that's 4 carry 2, so this should be 4, 4, 3, 8. This number is wrong. This number here is wrong. It's 4, 4, 3, 8. So the top is 16, 16, 23 out of 4, 4, 3, 8. Voila. That's the answer to part B. That's the answer to part B. And of course we can confirm all of these answers because the answers are given in the book. And if you're interested, if you just turn the page, I hope that you are looking at the book. I hope the book is in front of you. And the book is in, a book is indeed in front of you. Page 321 is where we are. And if you just turn a couple of pages, on page number 325, they give you the answers. You can confirm the answers. That's the correct answer. I was just giving you a big lecture as to how not to be sloppy and I gave a fine demonstration of how to be sloppy. Let's do the last part, part C. You're done with all of this and we don't need it. Part C is somebody who is either a freshman or a sophomore and lives on campus. Somebody who is a freshman or a sophomore. So how do we write it? Probability of choosing somebody at random somebody who is a freshman or a sophomore. That's the condition. They have to be either a freshman or a sophomore. That's the condition. Then the question is, of all of those people who are freshmen or sophomores, what are the odds of picking somebody who lives on campus? One more time. The question here is, of out of all the people who are either a freshman or a sophomore, so that's the condition we have to fulfill. Out of these people, they have to be either a freshman or sophomore. What are the odds that among those people, that if I were among from these people, not from all of the people, among the people who are either freshmen or a sophomore, if I were to pick one at random, what are the odds that that, happens, that person happens to live on campus? So this is a conditional probability. This is a conditional probability. The condition is that they have to be either a freshman or a sophomore. And among the people who are freshmen or sophomore, what are the odds that if I were to pick one, that person lives on campus? Voila.
C represents the people who live on campus. So question, the way this is how the question reads. This is how the question, the way the question would read. What are the odds of picking somebody who lives on campus provided, provided that that person is either a freshman or a sophomore? Or one more time, what are the odds of picking somebody who lives on campus given that that person is either a freshman or a sophomore? So this is our pool. Our pool is not this amount, not all the people, only the people who are freshmen or sophomores. So let's show it here. Let's erase all of this thing. We're done with this thing. Freshman or sophomore. Okay, watch what happens. So our pool now, our pool now, are these people. These are the people who are fresh, either freshmen or sophomores, right here. So our total pool is these four numbers. These four numbers is our total pool. This is going to go on the bottom. That's going to go on the bottom because that's the total number of people we're dealing with. People who are either freshmen or sophomores. We have 1,812 people who are freshmen who live on campus. We have 625 people who are, who are freshmen and live off, off campus. We have 1,236 people who are sophomores and live on campus. And then we have 908 people who are sophomores but live off campus. This is our pool. These are the, these are, these, this, the addition of these two numbers, these two numbers would represent the total number of sophomores we have. Addition of these two numbers will represent total number of freshmen we have. And out of these two people, these two categories, if you were to pick one person, what are the odds that that person lives on campus? How many of these people live on campus? Well, the people who live on, on campus out of all of these are these people. Are these the, are the freshmen who live on campus and the sophomore who live on campus. That's going to go on the top. 18, 12. Let's choose a different color. 18, 12. These are the freshmen who live on campus and 1236. There you go. This is, this is our answer. We just have to crunch the numbers. We just have to crunch the numbers. So we have 7, 3. Hopefully I won't make a mistake this time. I won't muck it up. Muck it up with an M, not an F. Do you understand? M as in Mary. 14, 31. So we have 24, 37, 2,437 freshmen and we have 4, carry 1, 4, 11, carry 1, 2,144 sophomores. Let's, let's add up these two figures. That's going to be 11, 11, carry 1, that's an 8, that's a 5 and that's a 4. So it looks like we have a total of 4,581 people who are either a freshman or a sophomore. Let's continue here. We no longer need it. Let's continue here. Let's continue on this side. So the so denominator happens to be 4,581. 4,581. And let's add up these two figures. People who live on campus and are freshmen and people who live on campus and who are sophomores. Sophomores who live on campus and freshmen who live on campus. 8, 4, 0, 3. I get 3,048 3, out of 4,581. Those are the odds. Those are the odds. But as you can see, there is, there is not much we can do with these figures. It's just going to sit there looking ugly, looking hideous. I'm looking at the back of the book here just to confirm that that we did, we indeed have the right answer because now I don't have the faith in it because I just screwed up a little while ago. Yes, if you look at the answers on page number 325, that's exactly what it says. 3048 divided by 4581. There you go. There is our answer to part C. And that was problem number 13. That was problem number 13. Tomorrow when we meet, we will do the penultimate video, a penultimate video and penultimate problem in the, on, the, on the topic of probability. We will do the penultimate problem on the, on the topic of probability, which happens to be the next problem, problem number 14. And the last problem is problem number 15, which is going to be our lesson on tomorrow. Problem number 14, we will do it tomorrow. Do you understand? Very good job. Let's learn this word, shall we?
Problem number 14 is the penultimate problem on the topic of probability. And then day after tomorrow we'll do the ultimate problem, the last problem, problem number 15. Penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying, I'm looking at my vocabulary list so I can tell you when we learn it. I don't have it with me. I'll tell you tomorrow. Penultimate, just, penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. We did learn this word in our vocabulary lessons, as I said a second ago. In the next video, I'll tell you which day it was. Okay? If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, because not only you want to get a decent score in math, but you also want to get a decent score in the verbal part of the exam, and for which a decent vocabulary is a must. So if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, there are videos on my channel that will help you do just that. These are GRE vocabulary words, and I'll tell you which day we learn the word penultimate tomorrow in the next video. Okay? Bye now.